Hey everybody, this is Polio Jr. And today I wanted to show you guys um, how to revert back from Windows 10 to your previous operating system um, when you are past your 30 day period after installing Windows 10 on your computer. So if you can't actually go to the start menu, go to settings and then go to um, update and security, that's where you would go. If you were within the 30 day period, uh, you would click recovery and then it would say um, reset this PC to uh, whatever operating system you and you had on it before. So Windows 8.1, Windows 8, Windows 7, and it would give you the option to just go back to that operating system. No problem. And so then since um, this specific laptop has passed its 30 day period, um, what I've done is just backed up all the files that I needed off of it and going to have to do a custom installation uh, of Windows 7 because that's still the, the most preferable one uh, out of all the Windows operating systems that are available. So we do not have the option here. So what we're going to do is shut down this computer and then we're going to enter the BIOS because um, sometimes I boot from CDs, but I typically am just... Um, I still like booting from CD-ROMs better. So I'll show you the ways around um, to boot to a Windows 7 CD uh, because the way that a lot of the BIOS uh, setups are, um, you have to change a couple settings in them to actually uh, boot from uh, a CD. So I'll show you that. So now we are in the next step. Let me get this piece T out here. We're in the next step where this is in the BIOS, so it's going to be different for uh, how to get into the BIOS depending on what computer you have. Uh, from uh, this one is an HP, so with the newer HPs, typically um, what you do is the computer shut down or you restart it, and then once the computer starts back up, you just sit there and tap the escape key, and that is for HPs. Uh, for Dells, it's typically F2. And for any other ones, uh, it's one typically one of the func function keys, escape or delete uh, to get into the BIOS. So now within the last five years, they've switched up um, uh, the mode from the booting mode from legacy to UEFI. And so I'm booting from a CD. You can also boot from a thumb drive. Um, and if your computer does not, you know, if your laptop uh, for instance, does not have a CD-ROM player, you can always get a, a nice cheap uh, external CD-ROM player, which will allow you to boot to the CD. But having the built-in one is the best, and I still like to boot uh, to a CD-ROM better than anything else. So now this might look a little bit different than yours, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in this HP one, I'm going to go down to uh, boot options. And in boot options, um, in order to have legacy enabled, we want to go to legacy support. So it is disabled right now. I would like to enable the legacy support. Changing this setting may make the system unable to boot the OS. That's completely fine. Yes. And then we want to have, uh, so, and make sure secure boot, se secure boot is also disabled. So secure boot, secure boot is disabled and legacy support is enabled. And then you want to go down to the boot order. So what, so in the legacy boot order, we want to change, we want to have the internal CD slash DVD ROM. Um, or if you don't have that, uh, whichever one you want to start up first. So I want to have the internal CD slash DVD ROM drive to uh, boot up first. Now, um, so that's number one, and I'm doing this just uh, just because for the UEFI boot order, I'm also going to have the internal CD slash DVD ROM drive boot up as well. Uh, so legacy support is enabled, secure boot is disabled, and that's all we need to do in here. So let's exit real quick. 
there's nothing else that we need to do here. And so we're going to escape saving changes. And let me make sure that my CD is still in here. Yep. So escape saving changes. Now, after you do this, typically, typically, uh, the CD-ROM should boot first, which is completely fine. Um, so, but we just made changes to the BIOS, so I have to enter this code saying that, yes, there was um, changes to the BIOS made. And then, so I'm hitting escape for a startup menu down here. But typically, if you let it go, it'll just boot up the Windows CD. So whichever CD you had before, you can put in uh, your Windows 7 CD, uh, your Windows 8 CD, whatever it is. Um, I'm going to go to boot device options, which I did not have that option previously. So boot device options. And then I go to internal CD slash DVD ROM drive. I hit enter and then press any key to boot from CD or DVD. So we're booting off of the CD right here. And then after that, the rest is history. Um, you know, just go um, forth and um, delete the partitions that come up. So you just select it, hit delete. Make sure that before you delete any partitions or format any partitions on the hard drive, that you actually um, that you have everything that you need off that hard drive backed up because it will be extremely difficult to retrieve anything else that you don't have either backed up on an external hard drive um, or on the you know on any type of cloud uh, like Google Drive or Dropbox or anything like that. Um, going back from Windows 10 to a previous operating system, so when you're not upgrading, you have to reinstall uh, any addition any programs. Uh, that you um, previously had. So with this one, there wasn't a ton of programs on here, but I will have to install, um, you know, Microsoft Office, um, you know, Google Chrome and all that fun stuff. So this is the option for that Windows 7 brings up. You would click next, you would click install now. And what I do is I, I delete every single partition. Um, and I did this earlier, but I'm just gonna show you real quick. Um, so it says setup is starting. It's running off this, the you know, it's running off the memory right now, um, and just the CD. Except I accept the license terms. Next, and then you do custom, advanced, and this should be the option for Windows 7 or Windows 8, or even if you really wanted uh, Windows XP, but no longer supported. And I would we have I have two partitions here, so I would hit Drive Options, Delete. And then I would, for the same thing, um, drive, op drive Options Delete. And then after that, you just click Next, and Windows will start installing. I have already installed Windows on this off camera, so um, I do not need to uh, install anything on here. So like I said, make sure you do have everything backed up. And if, you're, if your laptop that you're using does not have a, um, a CD-ROM player, I highly suggest getting a USB CD slash DVD ROM player. It's fantastic because all the Windows uh, 7 and up CDs are all DVDs. And after you're done installing, you're definitely gonna need drivers for it, uh, most likely. Uh, so the one that I definitely recommend uh, is called Driver Booster. Well, I used, I used two. And the first one I use is Driver Booster which downloads the drivers at uh, an incredible speed. And then the second one I use is called Driver Easy. And I use Driver Easy second because there are drivers that Driver Booster does not catch or does not install. So I do Driver Booster first, restart the computer. After that, um, I install Driver Easy and see if there was anything that Driver Booster missed because uh, there are a lot of times that Driver Booster uh, might miss one or two or won't allow you to because you're not um, you haven't registered the product and it's free. And once you're ready to activate Windows, um, I think you can type. I'm not sure if you can type in activate in any of the search options. 
But yeah, so you see, I just typed in activate and then it says activate Windows. And then from there, um, you can uh, activate Windows Online now and then type in the uh, serial uh, key that is uh, that came with your computer. And that's it. So, you know, it's typically underneath, it's on, on the underside of the laptop or it is with, uh, if you did purchase the actual CD-ROM, then it is actually on uh, on the CD-ROM case somewhere. So for that, and that's very simple one, and you'll be good to go because you can actually use the same key for, um, or for I know for Windows 7 um, multiple times, but it has to be, you have to have a span of how long you've been using it. So I think it may be like twice a year or three, two to three times a year, you can use the same um, serial key. So, but just make sure you are using it for the same uh, computer that that serial key was installed um, on. So other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, you have tons of options. The easiest one for me is being the built-in CD-ROM and just putting a, a disc back in. If you don't have that, I would then go to the USB CD-ROM if those are not available, you can always look online on how to make a bootable version uh, on a, of Windows on a thumb drive and then boot from the thumb drive. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is definitely something I do on a very regular basis um, for, all, for a lot of my customers is reverting them back from, uh, from Windows 10 to their previous operating system. And if they're past that 30 day period, then it's that what I just showed you was how you would reinstall Windows. Make sure all the drivers are up to date. Make sure you have a really good uh, internet security program. I highly recommend uh, Komodo, C-O-M-O-D-O. -O. Um, so drivers, Komodo, make sure Windows is activated. Make sure all the software that you're using is legitimate. Um, and then that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. Please like the video. Um, any questions or comments, please leave them below. Uh, greatly appreciated. And you guys have an awesome day. Thanks for watching. See ya.